I'm feeling nostalgic already. I've installed a fresh resource pack especially for this video and I've got to say it's it's got me feeling good and today we're going to take a look at things that only original Minecrafters remember. But before we start I have to do this because if I don't do this then people will tell me that I've forgotten it down in the comment section even though it was in episode 2. Lovely. Thing number one, when Lapis was only useful for dying things. I mean, I used to get tons upon tons of the stuff, and I used to hoard it in chests, and occasionally <laughs> I would use it to dye blue wool, and very, very occasionally I would use it to make Lapis blocks, but for the most part it was just, it was completely pointless. When furnaces had stone tops. Now I'm going to be honest, I had totally forgotten about this one. I thought this was a mistake with the texture pack that I'm using, but I went back and checked, and this is the original furnace texture. For some reason, this has completely left my mind. I'm so used to the new texture now that this looks strange. This looks really, really weird. Iron golems used to be a lot more friendly. I I've brought you flowers and you brought me nothing in return. I mean, I know that this is a poppy and you used to hold a rose, but still. When iron golems were first introduced into the game, they used to hold roses in their arms and they used to hold them out to you. And it looked really quite sweet until you accidentally hit them and they killed you. Not being able to place buttons and levers in the places that you can now. 14 year old me would be so happy seeing this. And he would be even happier seeing this. You see, originally we could only place buttons and levers and things on the sides of blocks and it was an absolute nightmare. And the same thing goes for dispensers. We could only place them like this. We couldn't place them facing upwards, which is a little bit ridiculous if you're asking me. Also, why does it look like this thing's just eaten a lemon? and is absolutely hating the experience. <laughs> Am I the only one that sees that? I may be slightly stretching the definition of old school here, but back when this was the only bed color, it didn't matter what color of wool you put into your bed, somehow in the process of creating a bed, all color was lost and you ended up with red. This was, this was it. And you know what? To this day, I still think red is the best bed color in Minecraft. Give me all the options, I'm gonna be choosing red. I remember when Minecraft was first becoming popular and you heard the news that Deadmau5, the musician, actually played it. I mean, that just, that made it a little bit cooler. But then when you found out that Deadmau5 had his own specific skin with massive ears, I mean, come on, come on. I don't even really listen to that style of music, but instantly I was a massive fan of Deadmau5, all right? The current menu system that we have in Minecraft is really, really nice with the moving backgrounds and things like this, but let's be real, you know, original Minecraft is this dirt, isn't it? It's a nice dirt background. <laughs> <laughs> that was the choice. Looking back, it was a little bit strange, but it definitely feels Minecrafty. Now, here's a feature that I genuinely hadn't realised that they had removed, even to this day, and it's zombies destroying doors. I hadn't realised that zombies don't destroy doors anymore. I, t I totally, totally thought they still did it. I still protect all the doors in the village to stop them from being broken. <laughs> it turns out that I'm a bit of a maniac and I've been doing that for no reason. God, how embarrassing. Right, let's move swiftly on from that one. Location pillars. Back before we had maps and things, uh, the way that you used to mark out an important location that you wanted to remember is to build up a massive pillar that you could see from a distance. So if you were walking past and you spotted it, you'd know that that's the direction that you had to head in. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that we have maps now. What on earth? Oh no, my, my old school Minecraft texture pack has failed me. It's, it's totally failed me. This is a brand new glass texture that you can actually see through. You see, <laughs> the original glass texture that used to exist in the game was... Well, it, I mean, it just had so many dashes and things on it that it was... You can barely even look through it. Hopefully with some wizard editing, I should be able to superimpose that onto the screen somewhere. Nowadays, we're kind of spoiled for choice when it comes to wood. I mean, we've got oak planks, spruce planks, birch planks, jungle planks, acacia planks, dark oak planks. And then we also have all the different types of strip logs and bark and yeah I mean it's it's pretty diverse whereas back in the day it didn't matter what tree you broke there was only three types oak birch and spruce you would always just get oak planks in fact it wasn't even specified that they were oak planks they were just referred to as wooden planks now this one isn't strictly minecraft but I think the point still stands do you remember when the game started becoming popular and then about a thousand minecraft clones just came onto the scene you know you'd have people playing fortress craft and, and block miner and all sorts of various different things of various levels of goodness, all of them being quite bad. This one's a super minor change, but I appreciate it all the same. When desert temples had wool instead of the terracotta in the center here, they're actually a lot more bright and colorful. Like it was bright orange and bright blue, and then down at the bottom, ah, well, there was never any wool down here and I've actually just activated the trap. <laughs> oh, and the old school TNT sounds. Well, that was a treat and Totally not a mistake, that was all on purpose just to show off, you know, I just wanted to show off the old TNT noises, I'm not... Ah, uh, yeah, I'm useless. Nowadays, in Minecraft, we think of water as being a lovely, peaceful thing, you know, you can jump in it, you can swim around in it, it's, it's, it's really quite pleasant. But I'm sure some of you old school Minecrafters will remember 
How terrifying it used to be to go underwater in Minecraft back in the day because if you went into flowing water and you started taking damage, every single time you took damage you would actually fall downwards which would mean that you wouldn't be able to swim back up to the surface and you were guaranteed to die. You would get stuck underwater. It was a nightmare. This one's actually a little bit too old school for me, but I do remember hearing about it. On April Fools of 2011, a locked chest would generate into any existing Minecraft world, and if you right-clicked onto it, you'd be told you needed to purchase a key from the Minecraft store, and there was all sorts of things available, and it was essentially poking fun at the loot system in Team Fortress 2. Now, as someone who played a little bit of Team Fortress 2 back then, I actually heard about this before I started playing Minecraft, which is a little bit interesting. Although, with that being said, I might have my timelines totally mixed up. I don't even know what there is, let alone when I started playing what. The original name for sugarcane was reeds. However, according to the Minecraft wiki, the community clearly didn't like this that much because they were informally referred to as bamboo and papyrus, which I find really interesting because I look at this and just think sugarcane now, but I suppose now it does look a lot like bamboo and I'm not sure what papyrus looks like. In my head, all I'm thinking of is papayas and they definitely don't look like what sugarcane looks like. When there were no specific biome colors and everything was just this bright, luminous green, it didn't matter where you went, Everything just looked like this. Now, I'm not sure I'm such a fan of the bright luminous green, but it is quite nice being able to build anything anywhere. I mean, swamps are basically ruined by how disgusting they look. It would be cool if they were a tiny bit brighter. Or not. <laughs> you know, this is why I'm not a developer, because I just flip-flop on my decisions endlessly. Minecraft 2.0. I actually remember this very vividly because I was around my friend's house when the update supposedly dropped and all of the members of the Hermitcraft server were making videos on it and I must admit I got super super excited although some of the features sounded a little bit strange and it was only like 10 minutes later that I realized that actually it was an April Fool's joke. It's one of the only April Fool's jokes I've fully fallen for but it did inspire me to make that little animation that you saw right there and that inspired me to make a whole YouTube channel called Things in Nutshells that eventually I gave up on because they just, they took too much time. You know what, I'll, I'll chuck a link to it down in the description though if you do want to check out those old videos. The Endless Sky Dimension Rumours. Now, the Aether mod was incredibly popular back when I first started playing Minecraft and I still love that mod and actually the developer recently got hired by Mojang so that's a very happy story. But I remember there was always rumours that Minecraft was officially going to introduce a Sky Dimension and obviously it never ended up happening. Or I guess it kind of did with the end, although that's not really a Sky Dimension, no, no. No, we're not counting that. When biomes would generate next to one another without it really making sense that they weren't next to one another, you'd have a desert right next to a snowy biome and they would there would be no transition between them. It would just go from sand to snow. It really didn't make any sense. You could have deserts surrounded by ice. It was all a little bit of a mess. Nowadays, the terrain generation is quite a bit more intelligent. Now, this one is one that I actually kind of stumbled across while I was looking for other features. When it comes to game development, sometimes you have to make a few sacrifices when it comes to realism. Okay, we all know that if you walked into a cactus in real life, it would hurt. And in Minecraft, it does hurt. Now, if you punched a cactus in real life, it would also probably hurt quite a bit. But in Minecraft... You can punch cactuses just fine, you can break them with your bare hands. This didn't used to be the case though. When you used to break cactuses, you actually used to take the same amount of damage as if you were walking into them, which is quite funny. They also apparently used to be able to be placed right next to one another, so you could make floors of cactus. However, I really don't remember that. I remember when I first started playing Minecraft, I searched up Minecraft on YouTube, just put Minecraft into the search bar, and this was one of the first videos that came up, and for good reason. I mean, come on. Look at the size of this build back in 2011 with none of the crazy tools that we have right now. It is, oh, I mean, this brings back all the memories because this is, this is one of the first things that I saw built in Minecraft where I thought, what on earth? You can build some crazy stuff at this game. And the same thing goes for Effie Disco videos. He was like completely changing the game. The Secret Friday updates. Now this is once again a little bit too old school for even me, but I remember hearing about the excitement in the community when these Secret Friday updates were rolling out. Every single Friday, Notch would release something, and these weren't small changes. For example, Redstone. Redstone was introduced in a secret Friday update, a weekly Minecraft update. The whole thing that my YouTube channel is based on was released in, a, in an update that took a week. That's wild. It also explains a lot of the quirkiness, the quirkiness that I absolutely love. I genuinely think if it had taken longer to develop the fundamentals of redstone, it would be nowhere near as fun to play with. I remember there was a time when we didn't have packed ice, we only had regular ice. So if you wanted to create an item water stream that transported your items quickly, then you had to make use of regular ice. But then you were walking a bit of a fine line, okay? Because you needed to keep the light level relatively high because you didn't want mobs spawning all around it. 
But also, it couldn't be too bright because then your ice would melt and your items would drop through your item water stream and be lost forever. I feel bad because throughout that entire clip I never actually threw items into this water stream. There we go, off you pop. Lovely. Right. I would say I'm feeling sufficiently filled with nostalgia now. It's always fun taking a trip down memory lane. Let me know down in the comment section any old school Minecraft things that you feel were missing from this video. Remember, there are three other episodes before this, so before you comment the oofed sound, just remember that was probably in one of the earlier episodes. Anyway, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya! And now it's time for me to let you in on the secret. So this, this texture pack completely made my game unstable with my recording software. It meant that I couldn't press escape or pause the game. <laughs> Every single time I did it, the game would crash. So I've sellotaped a bottle cap over my escape button so I could never press it. For this entire video, I haven't been able to press escape and it's been driving me mad. <laughs>